Hey, what's going on guys? Back for another uh, arcade related episode. So we are going to be doing a little bit of work on Cuphead. I know it's it's not another uh, not another Cuphead episode, but rather what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, pulling some parts out of Cuphead. We're going to be putting different USB encoders in for the uh, control panel. And we're taking the Brooks that are in there now, we're actually going to be putting them on a new machine that is the focus point of this. So if you've seen the title, you may already have an idea of what that new machine is. But just to kind of show you real quick, come over here, and what we're going to do is take these Brooks, little PCBs right here, it's kind of hard to see because they're, they're light, and we're going to put in uh, MC Cthulhu's because the Brooks support PS4, Xbox One, Xbox 360. So we're basically going to take all that stuff and uh, put it into the new cap. So I'm going to start by pulling these out, putting the Cthulhu's in, so I'll kind of show you what those look like once they're installed. Alright, so these are uh, these are the Brooks here, so we're going to be pulling all these out. These are the harnesses that actually go up to the uh, the stick and buttons. So everyone always kind of wondered how I did it. You basically just wire up, down, left, and right, and then your buttons here to uh, these terminals here on the on the PCB. And you can kind of see here how they're labeled four kick, three kick, all that stuff there. But we're going to be putting these into the new cab, and then what we're going to be putting into Cuphead are these. These are the uh, MC Cthulhu's. Um, these are a little bit older PCBs in the Brooks, but they're, they're workhorses. I used to use these a lot in my modding days for Street Fighter 4. But because Cuphead is running on a PC, we don't need the Brooks in there that do multi-console support. We just need simple USB encoders. So these do support other consoles. You can kind of build some cables for them, which if we ever change Cuphead into anything else, we can wire those cables up. But for now, we're going to take these guys and put them where these are. All right, so Cuphead's up and running. We got the uh, MC Cthulhu's in there. And as you can see, my movements here equate to Cuphead Mugman moving around. So that's done. So now we can come over here and focus on not only my energy drink here, but these uh, Brooks. So these have super old firmware in them, so we're going to have to build some buttons here to update these. But we'll pick this back up uh, back at the house where the new game is. So what we'll do is the next thing you see will be the new game that these are actually going to go into. All right, so in the middle of uh, getting ready to show you the Viewlux cabinet, uh, Mother Nature decided to be an a-hole, and uh, we're in the middle of Hurricane Michael right now. So as of right now, no electricity. But if we survive, you'll get to see this video. If we're dead and you find this video, <laughs> GG's. I'm trying to make people laugh with impending doom. Um, so if we live, here is the Viewlux as it sits today. All right, guys, it is now the fourth day after uh, the storm. Uh, we made it. We did lose power for about uh, 75 hours, not that I was counting or anything, uh, but it was pretty insane. But now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and focus on what this actual video is about. So here it is. This is a knockoff uh, Vulix cabinet, also known as a Chulix. Go ahead and spin this around for you guys here. Um, but we ordered this about uh, probably six months ago. Normally they take about 90 days, but ours there was a we were told there was a delay on getting in the monitors. Um, but uh, they're gorgeous, man. It's really cool. It's definitely worth the wait. I have made some modifications on it, so I will kind of walk you through what I've done, how it came, just in case you guys ever get the opportunity to order one of these. So again, it's a it's a bootleg uh, Vulix made in China. Um, this one did come wired for JAMA. Um, it also did come with like a, a normal arcade power supply, came with Sanwa buttons and, and joysticks and everything, but again, we have made some changes on it. Um, we were lucky, these are actually 1080p monitors. My buddies that have real Vuluxes, I, I believe theirs are locked to 720p. Not that it makes a huge difference, honestly. These monitors are gorgeous and they both, they both look great. Um, some changes that I made to mine is, I actually installed um, this Red Plexi. I got this from Yatan on eBay. Um, when I first saw the Vulix, I wanted it for Street Fighter 4, it kind of blew my mind, and, and it was basically this layout, it was white sides uh, with the red plexi and, and everything, and the real Street Fighter 4 one I wanted had a, I believe it had a red panel on it, um, but outside of that, you know, it's pretty close, so originally it came with this, which I, I did keep it, but this is the original kind of like header that it came with, and it's super nice, it's like reflective and it says Vulix and everything on it, but I just preferred the original look of the, uh, the red one, so that's why I swapped that out. Uh, on the top here, there is a little bracket for a marquee. Unfortunately, the sellers did not include that, but they are sending it. But also, there's a little LED strip under here that eventually, when the when the plexi's in here, it'll actually light up all of the uh, the marquee plexi or, or plastic. Um, we got four speakers on here. So you have one here, 
you have one here, and then you have two down here, the same same distance, just on the top and bottom. Uh, my buddy Jared, as always, did custom art for me. We've got the Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition art. Now, obviously, it's just there for decoration, because if we're playing Street Fighter 4, we're going to be playing Ultimate, but we got that there. Um, so, my main goal in this was to be able to run arcade boards as well as consoles, so I do have a PlayStation 4 in here right now. Uh, I will show you how I hooked that up, but on the, the access panel here, I did put... Uh, two buttons. So I've got a button here and I've got a button here. Um, those are both the home buttons or the PS buttons or whatever they're called on PS4. Um, and then here on the bottom you can kind of see it's got your normal uh, access door, coin door, and then uh, like a service door or whatever. Uh, it does have large um, leg levelers. So this is one of the big differences between a real Vulex and these is these actually kind of stick up and out of the leg. Um, but other than that, it's pretty solid. So what we'll do, I'm going to go ahead and grab a light so I can kind of show you inside of the access door. And then we'll go ahead and power it on and I'll kind of show you how everything works. All right, we're back. So I went ahead and grabbed my little uh, spotlight here so we can kind of see in here. So got my little Ryu here and my keys. But basically, it's just like a real Vulex or any other really coin door. You turn the key, little access door comes out. I am doing this with one hand. So I do apologize. We're going to try to do it as good as we can. But basically, here is the inside of what the fake Vulex slash Chulix looks like. So stock, it came with like a, a really bad um, bootleg uh, arcade power supply. So I went ahead and threw in a hat power pro just because I trust these more. Um, it does come stock with a Lapai, or I think it's a Lapai, one of those little like plug-in um, amps, which is nice because it, it takes RCA inputs on the back. You can run, um, you know, audio, however you really want to do that, which I'll, I'll show you here in a little bit of how I have my, how I have everything set up. Uh, but basically, um, we have that. Um, originally, it did come with, uh, like, Chinese power cord. So I did put in over here on the side, um, like, a power strip, like a power plug. So it's got, like, five, um, five power plugs. Originally, there was a two-plug Chinese one, and the Chinese plugs are, like, three-pronged. They're kind of weird. They look like miniature, um, like, walk, like, dryer plugs. Um, so the monitor used that, and then there was an open one, which obviously I don't have anything that can take advantage of that. So cut all that out. I cut the wiring for the power supply, put in a better power supply, did that. Um, ran a normal American plug for the monitor, which kind of feeds here in the back corner up, and then to the back of the monitor. Um, so once that was done, I was able to put the PS4 in here. Um, the problem is this monitor that comes with this is a monitor. It's not a television, so it doesn't run HDMI uh, audio. So what I did do, which I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not, is back here, you can kind of see it, I've got a HDMI in to HDMI in RCA audio out uh, adapter. So it runs the RCA audio to the back of the little amp here, and then it runs the video up to the monitor. That VGA plug that you see hanging there is also a, an output to the monitor, which is cool because what I can do is I can use arcade hardware like this, which is the Naomi system. Uh, but I also have a 15K to 31K adapter that you can actually use uh, the JAMA harness in. So this game, as I said earlier, did come wired for JAMA. Um, so in here, you can kind of see the JAMA edge connector. Again, this will be replaced with a really nice JAMA harness at some point. But you can run JAMA boards on it, and then you output that to the little board, and it will output to the monitor. And um, one thing that does kind of suck is over here, you can see the uh, access panel I'm trying to make the light work here for us um, but you can see there's the power plug and then the test button and service button where that little uh, black piece of plastic is, is supposed to be where the monitor adjustment board is but the monitor adjustment board is actually behind the the monitor you have to, have to pull the back metal panel off of this thing to access it to change aspect ratios. Um, it did come in Chinese, so we had to change that over to uh, English, but once we did that, it's super easy to navigate. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that my, my buddy Lemony Vengeance on Instagram and YouTube, and, and I think he's on Twitch or whatever, um, he did message me that he was gonna see if he could put another uh, extension cable together. He had a Chulix he recently redid, and he made an extension cable to run it from back where it was to down here where it's supposed to be. Um, but once he had done that, um, you know, that's pretty much what, how it's supposed to work, so it'll be much easier to adjust things. Um, so you can see some, some JST plugs hanging here. I'll show you why. I wired this up, so those are the JAMA plugs. So if I want to play a JAMA game, I can swap them under the control panel. 
Um, but right now I have the PS4 in here. You can actually see the USB cables, they kind of go up and or around and up, and I'll show you what those do next. Okay, so back up here, um, we're on the control panel. Um, I think, do I have this locked? I do have it locked. Dang it. Let me get the key real quick. All right. So underneath here, I'll kind of give you a cool angle here. There's a little lock. Doing this from the side's kind of rough. Basically, you turn that and then it locks the control panel. Let's so pull this open. This lifts up. And then we see here we have our nice organized wiring and everything. We have our little slide mech here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way because this whole back panel actually comes up over the light or over the, the strip here. So once this is up, it kind of rests here. You can see that I have wired in uh, the Brook PS4 boards. So in here, what I've got is these little Brook boards, and I've made custom uh, JST wires that plug into the stock um, wire looms here. So you see here's player two, here's player one. So didn't mess with any of this wiring, just wired it into these females. These then go into the Brook boards. The USB cables here then go into the PS4. So pretty simple. And again, if I want to change over back to JAMA, I just unplug these JST connectors, uh, pull the ones up for the JAMA harness, plug those into player one and player two, then that controls an, an actual arcade board. Um, again, I wanted to keep it simple, um, make it easy to swap stuff on this. I wanted to be able to pretty much play everything that I can. Um, these buttons here, again, are the home buttons or the guide buttons, whatever we want to call them. But for now, let's see if we can close this one handed. We'll go ahead and shut that, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and power this thing on so I can kind of show you what it looks like. So down here, in the access door, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a little button right here. <coughs> Gotta love that. All right, we're back. Now we're actually gonna try to turn this thing on. So I had a loose, uh, I moved my ca uh, cab out to unplug my solder and I forgot I unplugged it. So go ahead and turn this on here and hopefully we'll get some power here. See if we can kind of turn on there. There. PlayStation's on. Okay. Kind of working on this plug over here. Getting a little weird. There we go. So now we've got our amp on. We have the PlayStation loading up. We can see the monitor kind of loading here. It's everything there. So we'll go ahead and sit up here so we can see what it does. Up here, so it says press the PS button. So again, these little buttons that we have here. Brings this up. You can go ahead and pick that there. Um, I'm hoping you can hear all that. So uh, we did get lucky. They did include this um, LED lighting here under the uh, the glass on the control panel here. Um, it is nice. But one thing that kind of sucks is when you play a game. Throw some Street Fighter on. Uh, when you play a game and the audio hits, because the audio is pulling its 12 volts off of the power supply as well. It does this weird thing where it like pulses, and I'm, I'm assuming it's just because it's pulling the 5 volt and the 12 volt and all these different things from that power supply. And even though that's a beefier power supply, uh, when it pulls that, that current, you can actually kind of see it drop. So what I did on the actual JAMA power supply was I put a little voltmeter on here. So when we, when we are running JAMA games, we can kind of get an idea of what power it's pulling. But back up here, letting it load. And yeah, the PS4 does take its time sometimes to load stuff. Um, yeah, overall, I, I'm in love with it. I've had it for about two weeks, and then the hurricane came and wiped out, so I haven't been able to really play with it. I finished wiring it up on on Tuesday night, and the hurricane hit Wednesday afternoon, so I just really haven't had a lot of time to, uh, to get with it. And you guys can see how long it takes the PS4 to load games sometimes. It's pretty ridiculous. But over here... While we're waiting, I guess I'll show you these. You've seen them before, for those of you guys that have been watching. is the uh, the Windy, and then we have the Eager 2. And I did, uh, the next video I do is going to be on the um, the Darksoft multi-boards. Um, I did just get in the Multi-F3, which is freaking amazing. Um, so the next video, what we'll do is we'll cover the Multi-F3, the Multi-STV, and the uh, Multi-CPS2. Uh, this way, if anyone's kind of interested in how they work or what they do, 
we can kind of run through those um, while we're waiting. This is crazy that it's taking this long. It says it's still loading. This is nuts. It did this the other day, and I thought it was kind of weird, but I don't know if this is normal. But that's what it's doing. I'll give it another couple seconds, and if not, we'll just cut the video and pick it back up. Alright, so we'll go ahead and cut this video. And when it finally lo oh, oh, look at that. There we go. There's a the timing. Took its sweet time. So let's see if we put this over here. If we can get a decent angle. And I'm not good at this game, but. See if we can't do a couple things. Uh, let's get a big guy so I can actually do stuff. There we go. So I've got it wired up. You do have to change the button config to controller type A, which I, I did the layout after the uh, Mad Cats TE. So you can see all six buttons work here. So you, all the plinking, all that stuff still works. Blocking still good. You can do FADC to ultra. So I don't have like a an eight button layout, so I only have a six button. So you just have light, medium, and heavy. So when you want to do ultra, you actually have to hit all three. So that's a super. And then if you want to do ultras, it's all three buttons at the same time. And we'll do that kind of thing. So we do that kind of stuff, and then if you can, we'll also do this. I'll show you this. Well, it loads hopefully. I think I have Raiden five in here. Hopefully it doesn't take uh, five hours to load like the last game. I've been playing. I was playing this last night when we got power back. Um, I also was playing Caladrius Blaze, which I never got to play on the PS3. It's actually really fun. It's pretty cool. This game's okay. I haven't really put a lot of time into it, and right now I actually don't have internet. We just got power back last night, and I don't have internet, um, so I can't use any of the network features, and it doesn't really show you all the data over here because there's no internet. Um, but the game's still pretty fun. Kind of show you what this looks like, and then we'll wrap this one up. But yeah, again, overall, I, I love it, man. Like, you can definitely tell it's not the same build quality as the Egret 2 or, or the Windy or anything like that, but overall, I, I was much more pleased with it, um, Good normal real quick to kind of show this to you. Now here it's cool, you can kind of like pick your weapon. We have lost contact with North America. Are there any there in the second? Uh this this arcade is uh rotatable, so you can you can have the monitor tate uh vertical. It's four bolts, they're on the back. You pull each the top and bottom each have two, you pull those out and the whole thing kind of comes out and goes back in if you want to run uh, actual vertical shooters in, in Tate. Um, Tate layout. All right. I'm not very good at vertical shooters. You can see here like data link and network error because we're not, we don't have internet right now, so. Remember, shoot them before they shoot you. Remember, shoot them before they shoot you. So it's got a cool thing where you can do like uh, a raid and stuff where you get the crazy 
bendy uh, stuff here. So again, yeah, this is pretty much it, guys. This isn't going to be a full review of, of riding or anything like that. I just want to kind of show you <coughs> what we've done so far. Um, if I can find the picture of when I first got it, what it looked like, I'll actually put it here. So you guys can kind of see originally what it looked like with the black header and, and that stuff. I didn't really, I was in a rush to get it done, so I didn't really uh, film changing all the, the wiring and everything over. I probably should have, just in case anybody else needed it. But if you have questions on it or you pick one up and want to know how I did it, I can go ahead and create a video that kind of shows you the wiring and stuff like that if you really want to see that. Um, it took about, um, once I had the parts in, it took about, I don't know, maybe an hour, two hours to convert everything over. Uh, my buddy also picked one up, and I converted his over as well, because he's, he's putting a PC in his, he's running like LaunchBox and, and stuff like that, but uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. If you, again, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, but again, this is uh, 2018. This is my Bulix clone or Chulix or whatever you want to call it. Um, but overall, it's great. You'll see more of this on my Twitch channel for sure. We will be streaming uh, Street Fighter and, and, you know, other vertical shooters and that kind of stuff on as well. So thank you dudes for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one where we're probably going to be doing just a quick little overview of the Darksoft uh, PCBs. So as always, thanks again, and catch you next time.